Hey guys, I just got back with a few items I got from a seller on eBay who turned out to be local to me. Initially, this is all I was interested in, in particular because of its excellent condition. And what this is, is being a television analyst. You may have seen me use my 1077B in a number of videos. Well, this is a much earlier version. It's 1075. I think there was a 1074 and maybe a 1070. But uh, at any rate, this is a much more primitive version of 1077B, which is new enough to actually be partially solid state. The reason I got this is, well, not only was it in great condition, I just thought it would be an interesting thing to play around with. So, like the 1077B, this has a flying spot scanner inside of it and you can put transparencies down inside of it here okay, I just see the CRT poking through there and it will take whatever's on that transparency scan it and output and modulate it and output it on VHF channels so you can use it for a test pattern generator and you can do a bunch of other things too like generate drive signals and uh, I can also do IF in addition to the RF uh, signals. So, uh, yeah, we'll poke around with that. So, when I saw this, it's always in great condition. I uh, thought, hey, that, you know, that'd be a neat thing to get. And then I noticed he was local. And I thought, well, why don't I see what else he's got for sale? And lo and behold, he had a whole bunch of test equipment. Some of it I've already got. Some of it uh, just not that interested in. But what really caught me out was he had a whole bunch of oscilloscopes. And uh, once I uh, contacted him about this and one of the other scopes I bought, about doing a local pickup, which, you know, was like an hour drive each way, uh, but he offered to meet me much closer to my place because he was coming down this way over the weekend. So it got me thinking, well, if I'm not going to have to drive too far, and the prices on these are pretty darn good, I might as well take a, you know, take a look at what else he's got and buy a few more items. So I ended up bringing home... A few more things than just this analyst in one scope, so uh, I'm going to pull them out one by one for a closer look. Alright, first up we have got a Simpson Wideband Oscilloscope Model 458 Color Scope. This was advertised as uh, being designed to work with black and white and color TVs. So it has some particular features that they thought would be handy for color TV work. Oddball input. Now, unfortunately, none of this stuff came with probes, which is so often the case with this vintage equipment. I don't know where all the probes disappeared to, but... I didn't get any. Well, something else you may notice about this scope that's going to be common to all the scopes I picked up is it's got a huge screen. It's actually a 7 inch. And that's what really caught my eye about all the models I selected is that not only are some of them, well I think they're all fairly uncommon, some are especially uncommon, uh, and uh, they're all 7 inch. So they used either a 7JP1, 7VP1, 7GP1, all of which can be used in electrostatic TVs. So either for testing or if you just happen to have a set that has a bad like 7JP4, you can pop one of these into it. And also neat to have because you get a really big scope screen on that. Next up, we have a precise Model 300 Oceanside, New York. Again, 7 inch. And I believe this is also designed with TVs in mind. Notice this one has a plate on the back. 
Oh, I see those are for adjustments. Much of the handle is gone from the top of this one. We'll have a leather handle here. The middle section is broken loose. Hopefully all this will clean off. Otherwise, it's pretty clean. Just, you know, a little dirty, but I mean, uh, all the graphic, all the artwork, all the labeling is still quite legible. Serial number 1912. There's a saying, uh, you don't see too many 7-inch scopes. I don't think they made a whole lot of any of these models, I'm showing. Now, these last two are what I believe are the most interesting, rarest, and best built of the group. This one also has some inputs, adjustments in the back. And it is a Sylvania Electric. You don't see too many Sylvania oscilloscopes, but yes, for a time, they did make them. It's a Type 400. And it's either this one or this Sylvania. I forget which. But, uh, I looked up all of these online. I found like an oscilloscope museum website where they had info about all of them, including manuals, schematics, and such, and a little bit of background. And I think it was this one. They said that very few were made. I like the uh, nice chrome accent bar on the sides. And this one, well, may not have the uh, entire input probe. At least it's got part of one. So I'm just attach some new coax to that. Now what am I going to do with all these scopes? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if in any of these they're too far gone, like power transformers fried, uh, I can always salvage the CRTs out of them. Otherwise, uh, yeah, sure, I'd like to get them working again. Um, I can certainly find info about all of them, so that shouldn't be a problem. Obviously, I don't need to use all of them. I don't have really room in my workshop for all of them, but if I can get one of them working quite well, it'd be a neat addition. They are kind of big, though, and these, especially the Sylvanias, are way, way heavier than the others. Uh, from what I recall, they got a big, beefy power transformer and uh, filter chokes inside. And here's the final scope, the other Sylvania. This one has two chrome bars on the side. Similar looking graphics and knobs, Sylvania Electric. This is a model 132. Missing one knob, unfortunately. Kind of curious to some of these jacks here like why would there be 6.3 volts AC all right so eventually I will do an in-depth video on each one of these scopes as I check them out and see if they are repairable that thing is kind of unfortunate for now I think what I'll do next is head inside and pull a each of these up on the computer and we're going to take a little uh, look at uh, the background info and specifications and so on. Here's the website I was referring to, oscilloscopemuseum.com. All four scopes are there. Here's the precise 300, 1952. Here's an original ad for it. Available both in kit and wired form. Kit for about 95 and factory wire for 200 And there's the original probe. And it gives all the specs and features. DC through 5 megacycle sensitivity greater than 10 millivolts. Kind of laughable by today's standards, but back then it was pretty respectable. Here is the 458, I think it's the newest of the four, 1956. The color scope. The entire manual here, PDF form. Let's 
showing you all that you can do with it, applications, and there's service info. Uses, let's see, 7 VP1 or 7 JP1. I don't know if I can back here, click on the collection. I have it broken down alphabetically, so if we jump over to S through Z, we should be able to find the Sylvania scopes. Yep, there they are, 1, 3, 2, and 400. And that's actually the only two in the museum is the two that I picked up. Here's the earlier, the 132, 1947, right after the war. And uh, in this one, I actually have a letter. Somebody was having trouble with it. And on the museum, they're speculating that maybe there was there were some inherent design problems, and that's why not many seem to have been made. Some original ads, 125 bucks in 1947. There's a whole mess of them being made. And here's a service bench, serv circa January 1950. This is over there. And this has a full manual in pretty darn good scan quality. Fortunately, it's individual images. I'll try to glue them together. See if I can find a schematic somewhere here. Looks like they <laughs> just get included some decibel uh, translation tables. Alright, yeah, let's get to the good stuff. Alright, there's parts list. This uses a 7GP1. Uh, Lockable tubes. Now there was a 7GP4, uh, which was only used in one TV, as far as I know, a uh, Filco. And only in the earlier versions, it was later changed to a uh, 7JP4. So I guess it's a little schematic. A little faded, a little hard to read. So they use Loctal Type 7C7s for the input amps, both horizontal and vertical, two stages of amps. And an 884 common uh, oscillator, relaxation oscillator type tube used in these early scopes. 2x2 high voltage rectifier, 7y4 low voltage rectifier, and a CRT, and that's it. That's all you get. <laughs> it's pretty basic. Alright, that leaves one last scope, which is the 400, 1951. Which I think uh, of all these scopes, is the highest quality. See the uh, circuit has advanced a bit. Now we got uh, 12 AT7s on the inputs. Probably set up as differential amplifiers. A 6AU6, a 12AU7, Push pull 7A5s, driving a 7JP1. And horizontal oscillator is also a bit more complicated. So, this will all be fun to go through, I am sure. Here they all are up inside on my back porch. The two Sylvanias side by side, you can really see how similar they are. For sure, I want to restore those two if at all possible. And definitely the B and K. The other two, we'll see. We'll see. They look to be a little bit cheaply made inside. So we'll be looking for an in-depth video one by one on each of these in the not too distant future.